If you're not familiar with PTZ cameras, the first time you see one, you might assume that it's just a surveillance or security camera. So you'd be shocked to hear that a lot of churches use this as a top choice due to the quality that PTZ cameras can produce and the fact that they can be used by just one camera operator while they operate multiple PTZ cameras. Let's talk about them. How's it going everybody? My name's David. I'm the head video editor here at ReachRight and we like to make content like this that helps out churches and ministry leaders all the time. So if this is the kind of stuff that interests you, it would mean a lot to us if you could hit that like button and subscribe so that you're notified every time that we release new content. Now, if you've seen any of our videos and heard me talk, you might have heard that I've served on and off on the audio visual team at my church for over a decade now. And there was a long span of time where we were actually a mobile church and didn't have a building. So when it came to purchasing video and audio equipment, Equipment, we really didn't want to spend too much or buy anything that we considered permanent because we were hoping and believing that we would have a building and know the kind of setup we would want in the future. This meant my familiarity and what I was used to seeing churches use for audio and visual equipment was really just kind of limited to one type of camera, being DSLR cameras or mirrorless cameras. Fast forward to 2021, we finally get a building, we start looking into more permanent video solutions, and I feel like I've lived under a rock for the past 10 or 15 years. I'm finding out that churches are using DSLR cameras, mirrorless cameras, but they're also using broadcasting cameras. Some of them are using like red Komodo cameras, which are really top of the line cinema cameras. And a lot of churches are using PTZ cameras. If you don't know, the PTZ part of a PTZ camera stands for pan, tilt, and zoom. So much like the name, it really does give the camera operator full control on what the camera is doing on the tripod without actually having a physical person there moving the sticks on a tripod or physically moving the camera around. And more is just moving the lens around. And these have become a popular option for churches because as we all know, it can be difficult to have a lot of manpower or just volunteers in general, no matter what department we're talking about. But specifically with the audio visual team, you can actually get by with just having one person operate all of the cameras if you want to, if they're PTZ cameras. And on top of that, like I stated before, since you get full control with a little joystick controller, you can get a different variety of shots with really just two or three cameras. Now they do have some drawbacks that we'll touch on at the end of the video, but for now, let's talk about how do they work and maybe what are some of the options in case you're considering PTZ cameras. One of the benefits I see for most PTZ cameras is that they're powered over ethernet. This is a benefit for two different reasons. Number one, they are powered over ethernet as the name implies. So that means no batteries that you have to constantly be charging and switching out. But on top of that, that ethernet is actually responsible for getting the community communication method to our PTZ controller. If you're brand new to this, don't let it go over your head. All it means is that you can actually get an IP address over the ethernet cable that goes to the controller so that the controller can communicate to the camera and it knows this is the camera that I'm supposed to be controlling right now and then the same for all the other PTZ cameras you add over ethernet. So each camera has its own IP address that you assign to the controller. And then when you hit camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four, then it knows, okay, that's what I'm supposed to be controlling with the little joystick. That's all you need to know. Now, another benefit of PTZ cameras is you're typically not limited to just one option for video out. Nowadays, this really isn't a problem no matter what camera you're using. I know a lot of different cameras can do things like SDI out, not just HDMI or fill in the blank, but it is nice. I see most PTZ cameras have multiple video out options and it's just nice to know that they're there. So my church uses SDI out and then we actually run it all the way back to our video switcher and we convert that SDI into HDMI just because it's the type of video switcher we have. But if your switcher actually supported SDI, you would just run that straight to your switcher. Or if you're doing HDMI, you could do that too. Now the next benefit to PTZ cameras really should go without saying because it's in the name. It doesn't need explanation but it's important to know this is why people like PTZ cameras is for their ability to pan, tilt, and zoom. So not only does this obviously give you the control to pan, tilt, zoom, get a variety of different shots, but I find something that I didn't think about is the benefit is you get to kind of place these in the sanctuary wherever you want. With the DSLR cameras that we had before, they were actually in the middle of the aisle or the pews and we just kind of had to have people in our congregation look around them or seat strategically because we needed a good shot. If we put them really high up, we would have to somehow get somebody up high near the ceiling on a loft or something and they'd have to stay up there the whole service. With the PTZ cameras, we actually got them off the ground and they're actually able to see the entire sanctuary and we're able to zoom in and move around and 
nothing's in the way of anybody and we don't need anybody from the audio visual team to physically be behind those cameras operating them. Now, I only have experience using two different types and brands of PTZ cameras at my church. So I'm gonna show you guys what those are in just a second here. But if you didn't know, did you know you can get $10,000 from Google as a church to advertise in Google ads? Most nonprofits and churches do qualify, but the easiest way to figure out if you qualify is actually just going to the link in the description below and filling out the eligibility check. It only takes a couple of minutes, you answer a few quick questions, and then you can be on your way to find out if you qualify for $10,000 worth of Google ads every single month so that when people are searching churches near me, you can be sure that you pop up. So if you're new to the PTZ camera game, or maybe you just wanna add a couple additional cameras on, I really think that you guys should know about this new option that seems to kind of be blowing up on YouTube and the internet in general. This video is not sponsored, but the people at Obsbot, shout out to them, they did send us three of these cameras to test out for this video specifically. So I tested them out and I'm gonna give you my honest opinion, because again, not sponsored, just tested them out, and really, I learned a lot. The cameras I use specifically are the Obsbot Tail Air model. Now, the reason that these are blowing up is that they're really small, they're wireless, and they can do auto tracking. And you can actually stream from the app outside off like cellular data if you want. So IRL streamers, it's getting really popular with athletic coaches doing things that they need the, the camera to kind of follow them and do that kind of tracking while they're outside streaming. It's getting popular for that reason. They shoot up to 4K, up to 30 frames per second, and up to 1080p, up to 60 frames per second. They can operate off of USB-C, a micro SD card, or a micro HDMI output as well for your video options. They're also powered by USB-C, or they have a battery life that really goes up to about two and a half hours in my experience per recording. So with all the nerdy statistics stuff out of the way, I'll tell you my experience with them. So I wanted to film this part in real time because I want you guys to get an idea of the size of these. This thing is tiny. Now in the PTZ community, it seems like a lot of people actually say these are one of the bigger options. I disagree. Even the main ones that my church use right now are like maybe twice the size of these, I feel like. So these are really, really tiny, which I really like because one of my biggest concerns when trying these out for our congregation is that they would be a distraction. And then when I was setting them up, I realized the tripods that they sat on the tripods themselves were more of a distraction because they were larger than the camera. These are so incredibly tiny. I mean, look at that, that's the, that's the whole camera right there. <laughs> There's nothing else to it. And I actually found that they fit great on just a generic softbox or light stand like this because you'll see it's got this screw on the bottom. So honestly, my overall experience with these cameras was kind of hit or miss, and I'll tell you why. What you're seeing right now on screen is me just using the actual Obsbot Tail Air app. So if you have no other equipment, you just get these cameras and you have your iPhone, you can use the app and operate these cameras. You can do things like the auto tracking, which in my experience was actually really good. I even tracked myself and tried to purposely move around and run really fast to see if it could keep up with me. Because when I speak as a pastor, I actually am moving all around the stage and so does my other pastor. And yeah, the tracking features really do work. That being said, the app really does give you full control. I mean, even if you're a one man show, you can operate by doing things like hand gestures and it will actually zoom in and out or track you based on what you're doing with your hand. But I would turn those off because pastors speak with their hands and they might automatically trigger something. Other than that, you really can tap into all the advanced features you would expect from a camera app, things like aperture, ISO, frame rate, all of that good stuff, you can mess with that. So the app really doesn't hide anything behind walls or try to make it too easy to use. But my experience, it was a little bit of a janky experience. It didn't really work all the time the way that it should. If you don't wanna use the app, it is a little bit better of an experience to use something like the controller that you can purchase additionally that comes with the cameras and you get all the same kind of features just right at the tip of your fingers. And look at that, it even has a little laser pointer on it. But most churches are probably doing what we do where you actually have them on stands and you have somebody in the back operating them with a PTC controller. And with the help of their technical support, I did figure out how to get these to communicate with the PTZ controller and it wasn't hard. It was just getting that information in the first place seemed a little difficult. And yeah, as you can see, however I choose to edit this video, a lot of these shots are nice to have. It, it really did give us a lot of variety. All of that being said, the long story short about the Obsbot Tail Air, it's one of those products that says it can do everything. And in my experience, it was kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. We just wanted PTZ cameras that could communicate with our controller and give us that HDMI output to our switcher. That was it. And getting these cameras set up to that spot 
proved to be a little bit of a pain because there was so many different hoops I felt like I had to jump through or try just to get them to do what I wanted. They communicate over Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, they can do NDI, micro HDMI, they can record onto micro SD cards. It's just, it's a lot and I really just needed it to do one thing and figuring that out was kind of a pain. I mean, even just to get these cameras set up, you have to use their app initially and just get it to communicate with your phone and the app. And then once the camera is on and you find its IP address, you put that into the controller and all of a sudden you never have to mess with the app again. It's just that beginning process is a little bit of a, a, a pain, but honestly, these are really impressive for the price that they are, for the size that they are, their versatility. There's a lot they can do. And I would say if you're looking into these, they're probably a good option for additional fill cameras. Maybe not your main camera, but depending on your budget and your availability, they might be the best option for you. Again, thank you so much, Obspot. I think this is a really good product. It just has a lot that it can do, and I just needed it narrowed a little bit. Now, the next camera I'm gonna talk about is something that our church just researched, figured it would be a good option for us, and purchased them. So they're our main cameras, again, not sponsored, not sent to us. We literally just looked it up and thought these would be a good option. We've been happy with them. I'm just gonna read it off. It's the PTZ Optics Move SE. PTZ Optics is the brand, the actual company, so don't get too confused. But we also have a PTZ Optics controller that we use that is perfectly operatable with these cameras. I think one of the main concerns that churches have with PTZ cameras is, is the quality gonna be good enough? And honestly, every camera I've seen that's like over $1,000 or so, the quality has been great. I mean, even the Obspot Tail Air, I think the quality is good on those. The second concern is things like optical zoom or digital zoom. Now, our cameras are about as far back in the sanctuary as we can possibly do. In these cameras, they do up to 30 times optical zoom. And yeah, I would say that when you really kind of zoom in, I mean, we used to try to get creative shots like people's fingers playing guitar during worship. And then it got a little bit grainy and obvious, but for the most part, getting just a good shot of the pastor while he's walking around, zooming in from the back of the sanctuary, I've been pleasantly surprised. I don't think you have to be scared away from PTZ type cameras just because of their zooming capability. If you're getting a camera that's around $1,000 or so or more, I think it's gonna be able to give you a decent picture. Beyond that, if budget's not a problem, I've seen cameras that are around three to 4K, things like Canon branded PTZ cameras, and those are absolutely incredible for low light. Their zooms just seems like no matter how far you zoom in, it doesn't lose quality. Their sensors are insanely big. I mean, that would be the route to go, but I just don't think that churches are oftentimes looking to spend that much money on cameras. This video is getting really long, but really quick, I'll talk about the downsides of PTZ cameras. There's not that many, but it should be known that PTZ cameras really are designed to kind of live in your building in one spot and not be used for other things. I'm talking about more like outreach events where you're actually going somewhere that's not in the building. You're not bringing these cameras with you and trying to record on them. They don't really work that way. The Obspot Tail Air ones, they can record onto SD cards, but otherwise most PTZ cameras aren't designed for that. So that is the downside. For that, you would want something like a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera or a video camera, a little cam quarter, I think they're called, but that is one of the downsides. And really, other than that, the only downside I can think of is they're a little bit difficult to set up and get familiar with at first. But once you set them up and you get all your settings right and everything like that, again, this isn't a tutorial video, every camera is different. Once you get it set up, it's easy. Your volunteers don't need to know how to locate the IP address for a specific camera and add it to the controller and set it up and make sure the settings are right. Most volunteers, once you already have it set up, they can figure out if I wanna to switch to camera two, I hit camera two on this button and then move a joystick to control the camera. They're really pretty easy to operate once they're set up. Now I've rambled on long enough and I'm sure there's questions I haven't answered. I'm not sure what you guys are looking for specifically about PTZ cameras, but I'm sure there's some questions you could drop in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them to the best of my knowledge. But if there's other cameras you're curious about for your church, we have the video for you right here.